Alrighty guys, we are back today. I need my earmuffs, you know? That's a good idea. Okay, so we are back today with the Sig Cross in 308 Winchester. Um, I will leave the, the details on the rifle and the equipment and the ammo and everything in the description. So if you guys want exact details, please refer to the description for all that information. I'm gonna try to keep it somewhat brief so that there's not too much up front in the uh, intro. So we're gonna be shooting four different groups with um, one group, each box of ammo here. It's all factory ammo. We're gonna shoot one group with the muzzle brake and then we're gonna shoot a group suppressed. I'm probably gonna shoot all of them with the muzzle brake and then shoot them with the can so I don't have to waste as much time going back and forth from the suppressor and the brake. It is a QD brake so I can just slap the can on there but as far as being able to go back and forth, I don't wanna burn my hands. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot um, the burger ammo first. This is the only one that's actually like a hunting load. The rest are all pretty much just match ammo but they're all boat tail um, open temp hollow points or uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it, boat tail hall points. So this is going to be a 168 grain classic hunter from Burger that we're shooting first. I am going to be aiming, uh, I'm gonna, gosh dang it, I'm sorry. I try to put the, the target more where the light uh, will be on the target consistently, but unfortunately it's so dang windy today that the branches keep blowing around and um, covering up the target with shade. So I apologize for the lack of consistency on the target lighting uh, when you're shooting outdoors. That gets kind of difficult at times. So anyway, starting with the burger ammo, I want to shoot at the top right diamond, but I don't really know where the point of impact is going to be. We're just going to go for it. Um, hopefully I don't have any weird like point of impact shifts since the last time I shot this thing. But uh, we're going to go ahead and put three rounds on target, and then we're probably going to move over to the federal stuff next. Well, I didn't have to worry about point of impact shift, at least that's a plus. Well, shot pretty dang good. Um, we, uh, we are at about 80 yards, so we're not quite at 100 yards here, just so that you guys are aware. Um, this gun has shot quite a few poor groups already, so um, that to me was better than usual, um, or at least on the better side of things that this has shot. I did shoot these 175 grain Federal Gold Medal Match uh, Sierra Match King factory loadings here and got a clover leaf at about 80 yards, um, but I had a different muzzle device at the time, so I don't know how they're gonna shoot with this one. But this so far has shot better than anything, but this rifle was not really intended to be a target rifle for me. It was more or less inclined to be a hunting rig. So I don't really know that I would use these bullets per se, but I did just kind of want to see what the barrel was capable of doing. So I knew what kind of potential I was working with and these definitely showed the best potential. So we're going to shoot those next. Um, I probably will stick the barrel cooler in there for just a moment to try to give the barrel a little bit of a cool off, but we're going to probably not keep it in there very long. Okay, so next up is the 175 grain Federal Premium Sierra Gold Medal Match or Match King as the bullet, but Federal Gold Medal matches the ammo. We're gonna go for the top of the center diamond here. So it's already not exhibiting the same accuracy as the last time we shot this thing. Not that that was a bad group out of this gun, but like I said, the last time I shot it, it was literally just a ragged hole. So it was shooting exceptionally well. The next thing we're gonna shoot is the <clears throat> Federal Premium Gold Medal Match, whatever you wanna call it, 168 grain Sierra Match King load, which is these guys right here. And we're gonna do the same deal. We're gonna move to the top right diamond. I'm trying to find a way, I don't really have a perfect solution to this, but 
I think we're gonna do, the top three are gonna be these three here, and then we're gonna put this one in the middle, and then we'll just put um, the suppressed loading right next to this one. But essentially, the top left and bottom left diamonds are gonna be this guy, and then we're just gonna move down the paper along the line. So um, the groups that we're testing, suppressed and unsuppressed, will be in a linear symmetrical line up and down on the paper so that you'll be able to directly compare them. They're not just gonna be all over the place. So I'm gonna try to make it a little easier um, visually to be able to compare them, but explaining it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense anyway. So we're just gonna move forward and shoot the next group. Full disclosure, I am not giving this gun a lot of time to cool off. So if these rounds start to string off really bad, I'm not really blaming the rifle. I am gonna give it a pretty good break when we switch to the can though. Um, for a number of reasons, but that's beside the point. We are shooting the 168 grain Sierra Match Kings now. Overall, all these groups are kind of looking the same so far. It's really hard for me to tell. These glasses keep getting sweaty. But right now, everything looks like it's kind of shooting almost identical. <laughs> so there's really not a whole lot of variation here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move straight into the privy match line, right? Yeah, there are, or, I say privy, uh, PPU, it's the same thing. Whatever you guys know it by um, doesn't make a bit of difference to me. But uh, this is their 168 grain hollow point boat tail match ammo. And we're going to put that on the center of the target. So the next uh, suppressed groups will, for the most part, fall pretty much in line with the previous groups, minus this one, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Okay, so I actually changed my mind. I'm gonna put the privy groups on the left and right of the center diamond. I'm not gonna shoot the center at all. And that way, um, it should be a little more symmetrical as long as like my brain would handle that better for some reason. But just so you guys are aware, we're gonna shoot the left side of their center diamond here. That felt a little sticky. Didn't look that bad though. Well, these are already not shooting very good. Well, those uh, did not impress. I do think I might have pulled that second shot. I flinched a little bit, so that one could have been on me, but I don't, I don't know that it would have went to the left because I felt like when I flinched, it would have pulled the shot to the right, so I'm a little confused on that one, but um, I don't want to put all the blame on the ammo. The barrel is also getting very hot. I'm not just trying to make excuses, but this is the hottest the barrel has been since we started shooting. So it would only make sense for that group to string the worst. But we are gonna stick this gun in the shade for a little bit. It's getting pretty dang hot out here. Um, I'm not looking forward to laying back down on this mat after I leave it because it's gonna burn the crap out of me. Um, but we're going to throw the can on here after we let the gun cool off a little bit. I'm gonna stick it in the shade. I'm gonna give the cameras a break and then we're gonna move forward and redo the same test. Good lord almighty. I don't think you guys understand how hot this thing is. I mean, it's like, I feel like I'm just slow cooking. Um, Maybe not even slow, really. All right, so we are back to um, shooting with the suppressor. Um, we shot all four groups. We're going to do it in the same order. So we got the Burger 168 grain classic hunter bullets that we are shooting first, three rounds onto the bottom left diamond, and then we will move on to the 175s, 168s from Federal, and the 168s from Privy. So we're gonna start bottom left diamond, and then we're going to move our way across the bottom edge of the target here. Looks like the group opened up, compared to the last one, that is. Doesn't look like it's shooting good. I kind of expected that. I've started to notice 
with some guns and some loads i'm not going to try to get too into the weeds on this but it seems like this particular can can get kind of weird with different ammo types and um mainly powders it seems like there's just certain powders that it um if you don't get the powder combination just right it, it can throw some really bad groups and i i need to do a lot more research on that side of things so like i said i'm not going to get too far into the weeds on it just know that uh it's not all that unusual for me to put this can on guns and start shooting more poorly um so that's kind of unfortunate but i need to figure out why that is and that's going to take a lot longer than this video is going to be able to produce but we are moving on to the 175 holy crap even the rounds are hot um 175 grain sierra match kings in the federal gold medal match premium line and we're going to be shooting for the bottom of the center diamond directly underneath where the first group of the 175 if you kind of catch my drift here i'm basically just trying to shoot directly underneath for the first three groups or first three loads directly underneath where we original shot is where the next group is going to be so right now we're going to try to put this just underneath that center dime or on the the bottom of the center diamond here it's like we're definitely trending right here so that's kind of interesting that's looking a little more like what i was talking about shooting with this load the other day where everything was touching And then that has to happen. So we did throw a flyer, which I call it a flyer, but realistically it might just be what we were going to get no matter what. Um, but the 175s shot one really good group in the past. That doesn't mean that they're always going to shoot good. That just means that I got lucky that time. And uh, I don't know if that was a really good load for the gun and it's the configuration that it was in or if I just got lucky and, and uh, shot a good group with it. We had an MDT muzzle brake on it at the time. I did not film this, so I don't have um, a link to send you guys to that or anything. But I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit because um, even with the suppressor cover, I'm getting some Mirage here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this barrel cool in there for just a minute and then we'll finish this up with the last two and call it a day. So I know this is probably gonna irritate some people, but I actually took the suppressor cover off because I think it was actually doing more harm than good. Um, it's windy enough that the Mirage is um, probably not gonna be helped more by the fact of putting a cover on so much as I'm going to be insulating the can and essentially keeping the heat in the barrel more or in the can at least. Um, so I took the cover off because I think it's just basically making it harder for the whole system to naturally cool off so took that off um the mirage is just going to be what it is because like i said with the wind it's not going to be as bad as it would be on a calm day which is where those covers really come in handy typically but the thing's sliding forward on me anyway i still have yet to find a good suppressor cover that does not slide when you're shooting at all um everybody says that their stuff doesn't slide and i have yet to find one that uh is actually true so Moving forward, we are doing the 168 grain Federal Gold Medal Match Sierra Match King loading in their premium line. And we are going for the bottom right diamond on this one. getting really hard to see because well for a number of reasons but <laughs> the uh, the mirage is getting tough even with the the wind helping um it looks like that might have been the best group that we've shot with the can on it so far but it's kind of hard to yeah that's definitely one of the the better ones that first group was just kind of big the second one was it looks like it was about the same size as this one maybe not a whole lot of difference between them. I'm just getting a really bad fishbowl effect going on in the scope right now, so it's it's kind of hard to see very well, especially with these glasses. They keep fogging up on me, and 
um, really just getting sweaty. It's not even the fog that's the problem. It's just that the sweat keeps running down them. But everybody always tells me I need to wear eye protection, which is great advice. It just makes things a lot harder. But you know what? Life is not meant to be easy, I guess. So we're gonna shoot this last group here with the Privy 168 grain match line stuff that they offer or the PPU as uh, some folks would prefer to call it, uh, whichever one is fine, but we're going to put that essentially on the right side of the center diamond so that those two groups will be side by side. The rest will be up and down in correlation with one another. So this will be the last group that we shoot and then we shall be done. Wow, that one opened up big time. I thought that was actually gonna be a pretty good group. That may, again, have to do with barrel heat as do pretty much most of these groups in all honesty. Um, it's, it's hot, it's like 95 degrees. It's incredibly humid, which you can probably tell by the fact that I am sweating profusely and in Missouri. Uh, those ain't real good numbers if you're trying to have a relaxing evening shooting. So um, ultimately, we still got through the test, it just, wasn't ideal conditions. The The groups with the muzzle brake were actually um, quite a bit more promising than I was expecting, or maybe more so than just what I had seen in the past, because really most of the groups that I've shot out of this gun have been rather unimpressive. Most of the groups that I've shot out of this gun were also mainly suppressed. So again, that kind of goes with the theory that this thing can just be a lot harder to tune loads for, which is incredibly frustrating because I only have one can. Uh, that may have to change in the future because I'm kind of getting tired of dealing with it. But ultimately, um, this gun is capable of decent accuracy. I'm not going to say that it's a one-hole shooter by any means. It's a 308, so it's harder to control. That's just, you know, recoil in a, in a smaller gun um, in this cartridge definitely gets less manageable, which more or less is up to the shooter. But just as a general rule of thumb, it's just a harder cartridge to shoot in a lightweight rifle which this bipod adds some weight to it, but this thing's still a pretty lightweight rig all set up. Like I said, I'll put details on the equipment in the description for those of you that are interested, but I am gonna keep playing with it because that shows me that it can shoot better. I just don't know that I'm really gonna stick with it super long because I wanna shoot it suppressed and I don't really know if I wanna go through a buttload of work to try to get a suppressed load that shoots well because ultimately I was also wanting to be able to shoot subsonic out of this, which, um, right now ain't the best uh, idea because you can't get trail boss like anywhere and haven't been able to for like four years. So um, that is a little uh, depressing if I were to pick a word, but that's okay because we have dealt with a lot of issues in the firearms industry since the pandemic and that just happens to be one of them. So we're still making do. But as far as that all goes, we're gonna keep shooting this thing. If you guys have any suggestions on what you wanna see shot through this rifle or any kind of configuration setups, whatever you wanna call it, bullets, powders, primers, blah, 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 whatever it is, um, please leave a suggestion in the comments. Let me know what you wanna see out of this thing or shot through it or set up, whatever. Um, I would appreciate the input. Aside from that, that is today's video. Thank you guys for watching, stay risen, and we'll hope to see you the next time we film.